It's Mike. It's Danny. It's Uwe. It's Steve. And we're Landmark, and you're watching Live, Live Frog. Frog. Hello music friends, Marcel Hoster here, the Dutch guy, and um, I'm here trying to figure out a way how to present this review, because I am filled with mixed emotions. In a way, I still love progressive rock, but at the same time, there are so many albums coming out, and, and most albums don't really give me that amazing, enthusiastic feeling that I used to get, you know, years ago. I mean, there are still albums that give me that boost, but, but the majority doesn't anymore. And I think that's a real shame because there are so many musicians out there really working hard trying to get their music out. And I hear debut albums ranging from mind-blowing to, yeah, okay, nice, not bad. You know, that everything in between. Um, so, very often when I go out shopping for music, I tend to listen and, and look at other things besides progressive rock and well but of course in my reviews you know people send me their albums and asking me if I wanted to review them um, and I listen to them and there are a lot of albums that are quality wise good songwriting good performance good and everything but you know they don't really click with me or, or give me this boost um, yeah that's a bit of a shame but fortunately yes I have it in my hands, I've been holding it the whole time. Persona Grata, Reaching Places High Above. This was not an album that when I played it, I was like, yeah, wow, this is amazing, fantastic. Now this was more like, all right, this sounds interesting. I need to hear a little bit more. And then after a couple of spins, I really started to see, okay, this, this is something interesting, you know, this, is, this means something, this is important important enough for me to share with you. And the band also found it important to get their music out. Um, Persona Grata, I already like the name. You know, you have Persona Non Grata, an unwelcome person, but they gave it a positive spin, a welcome person. And I welcome them here at LifeProc HQ very much because they have created an amazing album, a debut album. Well, a little bit of history. The band hails from Slovakia to be exact, Bratislava, and they were formed in 1999. It is a six-piece band. I'll give you the rundown, but I'm only going to mention the first names because they have these, well, difficult to pronounce last names. So, sorry guys. We have Adam on keyboards, Martin on solo guitar, another Martin on vocals and rhythm guitar, Jan on drums and percussion, Timo on bass guitar, and Jana on vocals and flutes. So, two guitar players and two vocalists, one male, one female, and we have a flutist. Hello, city journeys over. I await your open arms. Now my time to live has come. The world is mine, and I will. Ride. Okay, a lot of interesting ingredients already uh, when to listen to this album. Now, I mentioned the band did a lot of work because they not just sent me this album, but they also sent me this promo package and here we have the band and when I open it up we have a lot of information, background information, uh, quotes from other reviewers um, and contact information and very funny inside there is also a promo version of the album so a nice touch you now they gave me a standard promo package but they also included this one a beautiful digipack there we have it, and here, as you can see, we have the names. Well, you can pause it and look up the last names, and then we have, of course, the booklet with all some artwork and lyrics in it. Um, the band has worked very hard on this album. As I said, they were formed in 1999, and yet this is their debut album. It was released in 2013, uh, so it took them a long time to make it, although they're a bit vague in a lot of things, you know, how the band started, what they've done in between, and when they started working on this one, because on their Facebook page it said a couple of years ago. So I don't know how long, but let's say for 10 years the band has been struggling to find their sound, to find their lineup, and then they started working on this one. And they worked hard on it, because if I open up the booklet, we have something here, a bit of a, sort of a personal message uh, to the well, listener of the album about the album, and they say here um, that uh, well, 
it was something special for them. I mean, it was their first album and they wanted to make it right. They wanted to make a good impression on the people and I think that is very good. You know, they're working hard. They really want to make sure that when people listen to it, they are impressed. That is very important. And they say here, uh, they've been constantly working on arrangements, adding layers, removing layers, playing with the sounds until they got it right. And that was the idea I had when I listened to this album for the very first time. I was listening in my car and I thought, you know, this sounds very crafted, almost artificial. There were moments in the music when I thought, you know, this has to be done by a keyboard player. But it turns out it was an actual musician. So this, there's a lot to be found in this album. Um, something I have to mention, uh, they also mentioned it on their uh, Facebook page in their influence section. They mentioned three bands. And one of them I definitely can relate to when I listen to the album, and that is Dream Theater. When I listen to this album, especially in the prog metal parts, I really have the idea, you know, this is similar to Dream Theater. It's not a copy, it's not, you know, doing the same thing. But the technicality uh, and, and the complexity in the songs and, and the way they play it is very similar to what Dream Theater does. And that is also something I thought, you know, with Dream Theater, my biggest problem is that I, I have the feeling you have a bunch of machines or robots, you know, amazing performers, amazing musicians, but I miss the emotions and the feeling. And initially I had the same thing with this, uh, but I started to listen a little bit more and gradually started to understood how well they created this album. The, the, the songs are really complex, um, they have a lot of variety in it, a lot of hooks and changes. There are moments when you think the song has ended, when it isn't, and it just they just change into something completely different, and still it is a part of that song. So they really make sure that the album uh, clocks 47 minutes, and for 47 minutes you are really focused on this band. <laughs> quite heavy. Uh, as I mentioned, progressive metal, there are also a lot of progressive rock parts in it and there are also moments in it where they give it a more retro feeling, going back to what I feel is uh, 70s Genesis, that kind of atmosphere they bring in. I mentioned the flutes, you know, I love the flutes in the music. Uh, there, was, there were parts on this album that I thought, you know, the flutes are done by the keyboards. It's not possible to do that, but they have flutist and she can do it. So, wow. Very impressive, musically very impressive, also two guitar players, very heavy on the guitar, sometimes maybe just a little too much, I mean if you put it on repeat and you listen to it the album a couple of times, I felt that yeah, I needed a break because it was a very intense listening session uh, when you put this album on for half a day, uh, they're, they're really crunching the guitars but very good. They're amazing musicians, also the rhythm section is very good. Um, the thing that I noticed when I started to listen to the album already in the first track was the singer. As I mentioned we have a male and a female singer. Unfortunately the female singer does not uh, you know come out as much as I was hoping it would be. I was hoping a lot of more dual vocals in it um, but I gotta say, uh, let's focus on the male vocals first. I, I love the voice and I had the idea, you know, we have, we're having prog rock, prog metal music here with a singer that clearly does not fall in that category, that is more a hard rock singer or a pop rock singer. You know, um, in a way it felt like the vocals and the music didn't belong to each other. But I like the edge on the vocals and the more I started to listen I really enjoyed the singer very much. In the second track that edge was gone and it sounded a little bit smoother and I thought oh man they changed it here why I don't like that. But in the last track the edge comes back again. Uh, the last track that starts off with some female vocals and uh, a really amazing singer. Now the interesting part is the album was released a year ago and in the meantime the band lineup has changed uh, and from the six members on this album only three have remained. Um, the female singer and flutist uh, left the band, also the keyboard player and the solo guitar player has left. Uh, there is a new keyboard player, there is a new solo guitar player uh, in it, but so far that is the lineup for now. Five persons and they are already working on new material. I like the 
vocals. I like the music. I like the way that they really created some complex songs that keep you listening, that bring some surprises along the way, that have some unexpected things that they do. Yes, a little bit too on the guitars, a little bit too dominant, but otherwise really fantastic. And then you have that third track. Well, officially the album has six tracks, but four songs. I mentioned three of them. Um, the third track is called Orient Express and is a suite uh, consisting of the parts Istanbul, Orient Express and Venice. And that is an instrumental suite. And it's like, wow, they have an amazing singer and yet they come in with an instrumental and a long instrumental at that. But that track is really a highlight of this album. And that really shows that they can create great songs with a singer, but they also can create great songs without the singer. And fortunately, the singer also plays guitar, so all the members have something to do even in that track. Um, now, the nice thing is, as I mentioned, going back to that idea that it was crafted. Yes, it was definitely crafted, but I looked up uh, some uh, things about this band on YouTube and I came across this clip. Here, link right here. Click it. Well, maybe click it after the review or watch it after my review. But there, uh, I found a live version of the track Edge of Insanity, the second track of the album. And then you see the band live on stage and you see that they can bring those complex songs that they have on the album, they can bring them live and they rock. And you see the enthusiasm the band has on stage. And I thought, wow, like, wow, this is, this is really good. I mean, I watched the clip a couple of times and, you know, compared it with the album. And I thought, thought you know, this shows that, yes, it is a well-crafted album, but it does have a lot of emotions in it. It does uh, enable the band to bring it live, you know. It's not a studio band. It is a live band. And I really hope that this band can play on a stage in Holland one day because they have really impressed me with this album reaching places high above Persona Grata. So check it out, check out the YouTube clips. As I mentioned, they are also working on a new album and they have one track of that new album already online, again on YouTube. Here we have the link, but links are also in the description below. If you missed it, you go. You can just look them up and click them and watch them. They have a new track with the new members and I gotta say that also sounds very promising. There I see a band that is really going to further in shaping their own sound and I think this, this band is something to well, keep an eye on, keep an ear on most of, importantly. So check them out. Persona Grata, reaching places high above. Well, I've done my part, now it's up to you. You may listen to the album and of course let me know what you think of it. Let me know what you think of it or maybe of the YouTube clips. You've seen it. There's a huge comment section below my YouTube channel so you can you know post your comments there and I'll do my best to reply. So well thank you for watching and you know if you like my reviews again you can click here for subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Check out my website but most importantly check out my YouTube channel because I have a lot more amazing reviews there. So thank you for watching and of course I hope you will see me at a new review.